Hi, my name is Morel K. Jackson, but you can call me Jack for short. I just want to forewarn you that this video was recorded between the time of 1.30 a.m. and 2 a.m. yesterday? Is that how time works? I don't know. Uh, my thoughts are very unintelligible, and I have tried my best to edit them into something that makes sense. So if I say anything weird, sorry. Um, but I do still think that my arguments are quite good, and I think that the thoughts that I thought apply. So just letting you know. This video has a weird energy to it, but it's one that I think is entertaining where I still make good points. Just letting you know. Okay, thank you. All right, welcome back. If you're here, you've probably seen my other video or at least are aware of it, but basically I am assigning Dan and Phil Taylor Swift albums because I am, as I pointed out in the other one, a Swifty. Am I holding that upright? Please tell me I am. I am a Swifty with a PH. <laughs> My whole thing that I'm doing right now, I'm in my pajamas by the way, it's like it's literally 1 30 a.m. <laughs> on October 8th, Tuesday. I'm seeing Terrible Influence on Friday the 11th and as I have been excited for it, I decided to do this thing where um, in order to encourage me to come back onto YouTube, I am making a video every single day within those like 10 days before I go see Tit, <laughs> where I make a Dan and Phil related video every single day. And it's been a lot of work. So right now I'm just yapping without editing. So you get to hear my unfiltered thoughts about just what I wanted to talk about. Cause I said, oh, these next two videos, they're just gonna be what I want to talk about. And what I want to talk about is which Taylor Swift albums they each are, all right? So check out my last video where we decided, well, I decided, I decided that Dan is with Nights, right? And in this video, I will explain to you why I think Phil is 1989. Now I struggled with this one a little more than Dan once I figured out he was Midnight's, I was like, oh, this fits perfectly. Like, I don't even need to think about it. Like, yes, it fits perfectly. And then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, it's completely perfect. I struggled with Phil a little bit more because I don't think there's like one perfect one that fits him, which there wouldn't be for anyone, right? Because everyone is different. But the Midnight's one was so perfect that I was like, there isn't one that's like specifically super well suited to fill and once again i was like i don't want to just go off of like a color scheme or aesthetic or whatever you know and i was I, I was maybe leaning towards lover because i feel like that could work but i eventually landed on 1989 and i want to explain to you my reasons why not all of it fits. In fact, I think there are quite a few songs that don't fit, especially because 1989 as an album is about like, it's about change and it's about optimism, which I do think fits him. I think that hope, that optimism does fit him really well, but in it being an album about change and newness and coming into your own, it also sort of details a lost love or like a lost could have been kind of a situation. And that I don't think fits him very well because I don't think it fits into his life story very well to be like, there's a one that got away because that doesn't, <laughs> that does not apply. But a lot of the songs that are about sort of coming out of your shell and coming into your own and, you know, being filled with that hope, that optimism and wanting to like go through the world with the like, the determination to be yourself and to continue to be that, I think fits him very well. I also think 1989 as an album has a sort of masked vulnerability that I think fits him as well because with Phil, I think he really tends to sort of hide his emotions, um, definitely more than Dan does, like definitely more. But I think Phil's very good at like, he, he keeps things close to the chest a lot of the times and only sometimes chooses to share things with us when it comes to like how he feels about certain things or how he felt during certain moments in his life. There's a lot that he doesn't share with us, which of course is his right, but it makes me very interested the things that he does choose to share. And I think like, you know, he often feels like he has to put on this brave face or like keep his channel a more lighthearted place to be an escape for other people because he wants to make comfort content or make people happy. And I think 1989 also fits that well because 1989 also has this sort of like 
layer of glass in front of it when it comes to like vulnerability which I think is really interesting because vulnerability has always been such a facet of Taylor's songwriting because her songwriting at its core is confessional diaristic songwriting and when you're making media <laughs> about your own life it becomes interesting when there's like a I'm keeping things close to the chest kind of attitude about it. The other reason why I was like, I think this fits, that was like a tangent. That's not like the main reason, but it's a contributing one. Um, the other reason why is 1989 is very much an it girl. <laughs> it is the pop bible of the 2010s. It's very main character. It's very, I'm the it girl. It's very like, I'm being iconic. <laughs> I think Phil just has that it girl energy. He really does. I mean, come on, come on now. I think he does. He has main character energy. Let's let's be real here. I'm probably sounding really cringy right now, but I'm very tired and I'm sleepy and I want to go to sleep and it's 1.38 a.m. And I've been talking for six minutes about this already without even getting to the lyrics. But my point is, I wanted to read off a, a comment that was left in the tags of my original Tumblr post where I was like, Dan is Midnight's Phil is 1989. These tags are from Seemingly Ranch Metaphor, which is an amazing username. I love that. Amazing username. But they said, yes, 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 we already agreed that Mastermind is the dance song of all time, of course, but also very much Lavender Haze, Antihero, Snow on the Beach, You're on Your Own Kid, even Midnight Rain. Those are all things that I said as well. I didn't include Midnight Rain, but that's interesting. Sweet Nothing, The Great War. Oh, I didn't even think about The Great War. But that's also a good point. And in my opinion, The Must Dance Song, Dear Reader. That's exactly what I said. I read these tags like two hours ago when I was preparing for this video. How did I already forget that? And on top of it all, the whole concept of Midnight's Sleepless Nights filled with the thoughts about your past. So damn, exactly. And then now they're saying, now I have a bit more trouble with 1989 Phil, but the overall idea and aesthetic and sound of the album is definitely Phil through and through. That's what I meant when I was like, this is my main reason. Concept and the sound of the album, that sort of like bright optimism. It's a sort of like determined optimism. Like I am determined to still have a good outlook on the world and I am determined to still move through the world with this like bright sense of hope no matter what happens to me and no matter what else happens like hope is something that like you have to actively do <laughs> you know and i feel like people don't often think about that and that also feels like a very phil thing to be determined to have hope it's a very 1989 thing and it's a very phil thing in my opinion there's too many breakup songs for me to see phil in them yes but in a funny way, I like to imagine Phil in I Wish You Would in hiatus context. That's the other thing is a lot of the songs can be sort of reimagined in like a hiatus context and a sort of like, well, I wanted to keep going with this thing and now I don't know what to do by myself kind of a thing, which is really interesting. And I'll get to that when I get to those songs. Also, this whole song run is very Phil, please. It's insane. This love to new romantics. Exactly. I will be talking about those specifically. Insane. I know places, yes, Wonderland, you are in love. Exactly, new romantics, very full coded. Also, I would stay forever if you say don't go. Mm -hmm. You can't convince me this is, I think they meant you can't convince me this isn't Phil during the hiatus. I can talk about this for hours, but I'll shut up, no one cares that much. I care, seemingly ranch metaphor, I care so much. Also, they said, just one addition for anyone not realizing that Shake It Off is the Phil song of all time, and I love him for it so much. Yes, exactly. And now, let me finally get to the foreword ahead of 1989. That sort of reminded me of him a little bit. I have some from the original version, and then I have some from Taylor's version. Now, I have a teeny tiny little excerpt from the like little foreword ahead of the original version of the album. This is talking about change. The debate over whether people change is an interesting one for me to observe because it seems like all I ever do is change. All I ever do is learn from my mistakes so I don't make the same ones again, then I make new ones. I know people can change because it happens to me little by little every day. Every day I wake up as someone slightly new. Isn't it wild and intriguing and beautiful to think that every day we are new? That's a little excerpt from the original like 1989 forward. And then I have the um, Rose Garden vinyl here. 
If I had the Midnight Vinyl, I would have shown you, but I don't. I think about getting it every time I'm at Target, which was also earlier today, but whoo, I don't have a ton of vinyl, only some. I also have Speak Now, it's somewhere here, but we're not talking about that today. But if we look at this prologue here, two paragraphs that I wanted to read out to you were, but none of that mattered then because I had a plan and I had a demeanor as trusting as a basket of golden retriever puppies. I had the keys to my own apartment in New York, and I had new melodies bursting from my imagination. I had Max Martin and Shellback who were happy to help me explore this new sonic landscape I was enamored with. I had a new friend named Jack Antonoff who had made some cool tracks in his apartment. I had the idea that the album would be called 1989, and we would reference big 80s synths and write sky-high choruses. I had sublime, inexplicable faith, and I ran right towards it. And high heels and a crop top. <laughs> Now, Phil wasn't in high heels and a crop top, but I would like to see that. There was so much that I didn't know then. And looking back, I see what a good thing that was. This time of my life was marked by a right kind of naivete, a hunger for adventure, and a sense of freedom I hadn't tasted before. It turns out that the cocktail of naivete, hunger for adventure, and freedom can lead to some nasty hangovers, metaphorically speaking, of course. Everyone had something to say, but they always will. I learned lessons, paid prices, and tried to, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, I'm sorry, I have to say it, shake it off. <laughs> also, fun fact, I wanted to tell you, when I was at the Ares tour last year, I went to the Ares tour in Seattle. During Shake It Off, me and all the other Swifties in the stadium were in fact dancing so hard that we did shake something, and that was the earth, because we apparently equaled the magnitude of a small earthquake, so... We literally caused an earthquake. You're welcome. But I don't know why I'm saying you're welcome. I'm so tired right now. I'm sorry if any of these thoughts come out unintelligibly. Oh my god, it's 13 minutes! I'm gonna get to the lyrics now. Here are the songs that I listed as being Phil coded on 1989. We have Welcome to New York, Shake It Off, This Love, I Know Places, Wonderland, what is, in my opinion, the most fan-coded song ever, You Are In Love, New Romantics, Say Don't Go, in that sort of like hiatus context, and interestingly enough, Suburban Legends, and I have a lot to say about that one. As for Welcome to New York, like I said, 1989 is about change, coming into your own. Welcome to New York, for me, reminds me a lot of like when Phil was going to uni, right? Going to Manchester. This is a new city. I'll, I'll just read to you some of the lyrics and I'll explain more. But it's that sort of like, I'm in a new place and I can be myself now. I can be more myself by being a new me, but I'm being more me kind of a thing. It reminds me a lot of like the freedom that he gained from being at uni and really coming into his own there. And I think that was a really important time for him uh, to sort of like really formulate his personality and identity as a young adult. At least that's what I feel. I know he looks back on that time quite fondly. I also think he was really figuring out who he was creatively at that time, especially with the like experimental videos he had at that time, which I'm so glad that interviewer brought up because I love those videos because I'm such a like pretentious film nerd that I like all of those so much. I mean, I literally have a degree in film and media studies, which my diploma has been delayed yet again. I would like to have some proof that I have a degree, thank you very much, with an extra summer certificate as well. So I did, oh my God, I studied film and took one law class. Oh my God, I am them. In case you're wondering, it was an entertainment law class. And you know what? I did find it interesting that it, it's mainly about copyright and defamation, but I did find it interesting and I did get the professor to talk about Taylor. <laughs> Welcome to New York. All right, all right, here's, here are the lyrics that jumped out to me. Walk into a crowd, the village is aglow, kaleidoscope of loud heartbeats under coats. Everybody here wanted something more, searching for a sound we hadn't heard before, right? That sense of community. And it said, welcome to New York. It's been waiting for you. It doesn't literally have to be New York. It can just be like, new place. I get to be an adult now. The lights are so bright, but they never blind me. When we first dropped our bags on apartment floors, took our broken hearts, put them in a drawer, everybody here was someone else before. And you can want who you want. Boys and boys and girls and girls. This is the lyric I wanted to read out because 
I also think that that time that I was talking about is also when he was like, well, I can be gay now. <laughs> but he's told us, yeah, that this is the time when he was like, well, time to take advantage. I also just really, really love the imagery in this whole song. It really characterizes New York as such a place of like hope and opportunity. I think it can just represent any place that means that to you because I particularly love the lyrics when we first dropped our bags and apartment floors, took our broken hearts, put them in a drawer. Everybody here was someone else before, you know? And you can want, you can want boys and boys and girls and girls. Come on now. Then we have, of course, Shake It Off, the Phil song. I think this really fits him, especially now when I think his confidence is at its highest, which we love to see. I think a lot of the things that maybe affected him before, he doesn't care about now, or a lot of the insecurities that he had before, he just doesn't care about now. It rolls right off his back. He shakes it off. I love that. He's, you know, I think he's just so unbothered by all of those things now. Like, we call him this, like, unbothered queen for a reason, you know? Shake It Off feels like a very Phil song to me. And do I even need to read off these lyrics? It would also sound very awkward if I did, but I still will. But do I even need to read these off? Because you already know all of them. It's already in your head. And I know it is, because you're a human being who lives on planet Earth. But I keep cruising, can't stop, won't stop moving. It's like I got this music in my mind saying, it's gonna be all right. Because the player's gonna play, the haters gonna hate. Baby, I'm just gonna shake, shake it off. Heartbreaker's gonna break and the faker's gonna fake. Baby, I'm just gonna shake. I shake it off. I don't know why I'm reading this like poetry, but you know what? I think it is. This is poetry. <laughs> I'm dancing on my own, I make the moves up as I go, and that's what they don't know. And of course, we have this, which I just love. Hey, hey, hey. Just think, while you've been getting down and out about the liars and the dirty, dirty cheats of the world, you could have been getting down to this sick beat. It just seems like a very Phil song. Someone do some sort of an edit with him along to shake it off, please. A very it girl kind of an edit piece that shows off his newfound confidence. Someone do that for me. This love also feels very Phil. I think this is his perspective. This is what I'm saying. This, these are their individual perspectives, even when it comes to like their journey together and then also like individually as people. We have the lyrics that jumped out to me. Clear blue water, high tide come and brought you in. And I could go on and on and on and on and I will. In silent screams and wildest dreams, I never dreamed of this. In losing grip on sinking ships, you showed up just in time. I guess I just literally didn't feel the need to explain that one. All right, uh, moving on, I guess. The next song I have is I Know Places. This feels like such a Phil's perspective song to me, especially that whole sort of like, this love will shield us kind of a thing. None of anything else matters. Like we don't, we don't have to think about that. I know places we can hide. Some lyrics that stood out to me were, you stand with your hand on my waistline. It's a scene and we're out here in plain sight. I can hear them whisper as we pass by. It's a bad sign. Something happens when everybody finds out. See the vultures circling, dark clouds. Love's a fragile little flame. It could burn out. Cause they got the cages, they got the boxes and guns. They are the hunters, we are the foxes, and we run. I also just like the mention of foxes here. Very British. It's just the chorus. Baby, I know places we won't be found, and they'll be chasing their tails trying to track us down, because I know places we can hide. Lights flash, and we'll run for the fences. Let them say what they want, we won't hear it. Loose lips sink ships all the damn time. Not this time. I love the determination in that lyric. Loose lips sink ships all the damn time not this time like a sort of determined like yeah things that other people say the releasing of secrets you know all that kind of stuff can ruin things for a lot of people but i'm not gonna let it i love that and i think it really fits they take their shots but we're bulletproof i know places and you know for me it's always you i know places and i know for you it's always me i know places i mean come on now next up wonderland right it's it's sort of similar but kind of different flashing lights and we took a wrong turn and we fell down a rabbit hole you held on tight to me because nothing's as it seems and spinning out of control haven't you heard what becomes curious minds oh didn't it all seem new and exciting i felt your arms twisting around me 
I should have slept with one eye open at night. We found Wonderland and I got lost in it. But we went on our way, too in love to think straight, all alone or so it seemed. But there were strangers watching and the whispers turned to talking and the talking turned to screams. Those are all the lyrics I'm including though. Because Wonderland does not have a happy ending. And then, I'm really excited for this one. This is the one I wanted to talk about the most. We have what I personally think is the most like fan coded song in Taylor's entire discography. And I love this song so much. I love it so much. I think it's beautiful. It's pretty underrated as for as her songs go. Because Swifties almost never talk about it. But I think it's beautiful. And it's so them. And it really feels like Phil's perspective to me. I could read out literally this whole thing, but I'm just gonna read out what I've written here, which I think is almost entirely the whole song. This is my dramatic performance of it. <laughs> this is You Are In Love. One look, dark room, meant just for you. Time moved too fast. You play it back. Buttons on a coat, lighthearted joke. No proof, not much, but you saw enough. Small talk, he drives. Coffee at midnight, the light reflects the chain on your neck. He says, look up and your shoulders brush. No proof, one touch, but you felt enough. You can hear it in the silence. You can feel it on the way home. You can see it with the lights out. You are in love, true love. Morning, his place, burnt toast, Sunday. You keep his shirt, he keeps his word. Not all of it completely aligns, but only a little bit. And for once, you let go of your fears and your ghosts. One step, not much, but it's said enough. You kiss on sidewalks, you fight and you talk. One night, he wakes, strange look on his face. Pauses, then says, you're my best friend. And you knew what it was, he is in love. I mean, come on. And the bridge as well. And so it goes, you two are dancing in a snow globe round and round, and he keeps the picture of you in his office downtown. And you understand now why they lost their minds and fought the wars, and why I've spent my whole life trying to put it into words. Because you can hear it in the silence. You can feel it on the way home. You can see it with the lights out. You are in love. True love. I like this song so much. I don't even need to explain that one. I'm moving on. New romantics, right? Here are the lyrics that stood out to me. We're so young, but we're on the road to ruin. We play dumb, but we know exactly what we're doing. We cry tears of mascara in the bathroom. Honey, life is just a classroom. Cause baby, I could build a castle out of all the bricks they threw at me. And every day is like a battle, but every night with us is like a dream. Baby, we're the new romantics. Come on, come along with me. We're too busy dancing to get knocked off our feet. The best people in life are free. We're all here. The lights and noise are blinding. We hang back. It's all in the typing. It's poker. You can't see my face, but I'm about to play my ace. I had to say it like that. I mean, come on. We team up, then switch sides like a record changer. The rumors are terrible and cruel, but honey, most of them are true. Then we have say don't go. Imagine this in a hiatus sense. I've picked a few select lyrics. I've known it from the very start. We're a shot in the darkest dark. Oh no, I'm, I'm unarmed. The waiting is a sadness, fading into madness. I'm standing on a tightrope alone. I hold my breath a little bit longer, halfway out the door, but it won't close. I'm holding out hope for you to say, don't go. I would stay forever if you say, don't go. I, I wanted to include this lyric just because I like it. I don't actually think it applies to him, but I love the line, and I'm yours, but you're not mine. <sighs> so good. It doesn't apply to this. I did want to add, why'd you have to make me want you? Now the last song that I'm gonna mention, and then I'm gonna close out this video, is Suburban Legends. The reason why I wanted to include this, and the reason why I think it's so interesting, and the reason why you should be listening to me instead of the dogs barking, even though it is one, it's two o'clock in the morning. It's literally 2.01 a.m. Suburban Legends. This is interesting to me because obviously the song Suburban Legends is about Taylor Swift and Harry Styles. And the reason why the idea of Suburban Legends is really interesting to me is because they were, at the time, really celebrities for middle America, I guess, if you wanted to put it that way. They were celebrities that were beloved by teenagers by demographics that didn't normally get a lot of respect. Suburban legends. They were really important to this 
group of like teenagers that people didn't necessarily take seriously but they were legends to those people and it's like that idea of like we were born to be suburban legends like important to them and how that kind of affected their relationship and i just think that idea is really interesting and i think it applies to them some lines that i i don't think the song exactly applies because again it's about like a lost love some lines that just kind of stood out to me uh this first one i just think is fun you were so magnetic it was almost obnoxious <laughs> i think yeah i think that fits <laughs> from his perspective. And I also just like that line. We were born to be suburban legends. Exactly. And then like that idea of characterizing it as like a high school I think is interesting also within the song. I also included, I had the fantasy that maybe our mismatched star signs would surprise the whole school. I don't remember why I included that but I did. And then this one. When I ended up back at our class reunion walking in with you, you'd be more than a chapter in my old diaries with the pages ripped out. I'm standing in a 1950s gymnasium and I can still see you now. This one also feels hiatus coded to me, especially because of that whole like what he's told us at time. I think it was really important for them to both individually figure out who they were professionally as like individuals outside of the Dan and Phil brand. And I think this was particularly interesting for Phil because he was like a YouTuber before Dan was and he was like big on MySpace even before YouTube. So he, he's been on the internet for a long time and he was just Phil for a long time even before he ever met Dan and Phil was the one who sort of like put Dan forward. Phil was the one who was like hey everyone go watch this channel. Phil was the one who always brought Dan along with him with all his opportunities and then they both worked together on the Dan and Phil brand. So like he put a lot of time and effort into that of course and then that was a collaboration with both of them for such a long time that when again it was like individual now he did say like he felt kind of lost like he he didn't quite know what to do and I think it was really important for him to also figure out who he was creatively and professionally outside of the Dan and Phil thing, you know? Which is why, I don't know, I think it's interesting to characterize a lot of these like breakup songs as instead I don't know what to do now kind of songs. More of like a professional break, not a personal one. But yeah, those are my reasons why I think 1989 is Phil's Taylor Swift album. And you can add your own arguments in the comments below because I would love to talk to other Swifties, you know, Swift Swifties. Let me know if you want this bracelet, by the way, if you're going to be at the same shows as me. Let me know what you think about my thoughts and if you agree and if you disagree, why? Or if you have more to add, what is it? All right. Thank you for listening to me yap for an obscene amount of time. Watch my other videos. More are coming. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. I'm so tired. I'm going to go to sleep now. Bye.